All right. Awesome. Um, well, yeah, I know that you two have, you know, been connected for a while, but we have not. This is a new connection for us. And just wanted to give you a brief background on the project. Um, I've done a little bit of writing in the Ethereum community, but uh, Yaler pulled me into this project out of uh, interest to really highlight the incredible humans that are working on some just really passion um, driven work in the Ethereum space. So I am uh, coming from a non-technical crypto background, more interested in like the who, the how, the where, the why, all of the, the good questions. Um, mm -hmm. So I am really curious about hearing your specific story, what motivates you, what gets you out of bed in the morning, or you know, if you do your work in bed, I wanna know that too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so looking at more of like the heart of your work, um, even though obviously we're also interested in knowing what, what it is that you're working on. So that's kind of the idea of this interview. And I welcome all anecdotes, jokes, stories, anything that comes up. If you want to go off topic, please feel free. If a question cool. doesn't land with you, don't answer it. But that's <laughs> kind of the idea. And um, yeah, if that sounds good, we'll, we'll get rolling. That sounds amazing. Perfect. Okay, so I think we should start where all good things start in the beginning. Um, how was it that you got involved in the crypto community? Where did your journey begin? Yeah, so I, it's funny that you say like the heart of it because I almost don't even consider myself a part of the crypto community. What I do is just like so deep in the like how do we as human beings work together how do we as human beings create space in which we can be not only efficient and collaborate effectively but also like create spaces that are good for us to be in while we're doing work um i have just like my whole life i've been like a customer service person you know i was a waitress the closest i ever got to tech was i worked for squarespace for a little while but even then i was a customer service representative um and then i stopped working uh, at squarespace and i traveled for a while and ran out of money and then i met dandelion and during the time that i knew dandelion i lived in a house with them and they started they left google to start working on sourcefred this kind of like strange idea that arose out of their fascination with crypto um and for a long time actually i just kind of was a supporter of them because i cared about them a lot um, we traveled together for uh, all of 2019 internationally. And during that time, you know, I did a little bit of art for source cred here and there because I'm an artist, but mostly was just kind of like sitting on the couch every evening talking to Dandelion about source cred, source cred, source cred. <laughs> um, and then we stopped traveling to together at the very end of 2019. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly went, oh no, if I want to continue to be involved in this project that I have like come to really care about because I really care about my best friend. Uh, I'm actually going to have to like get involved because they're not sitting on the couch next to me talking about it all the time. <laughs> and so that was when I like actually started to get involved. Um, and at first I was like, I don't really know if I belong here. I'm like, I can make some art for us. I could do like a little bit of design with my like informal hobby. Um, but also I'm just very like communication oriented, human oriented. We eventually started having our very first meetings on a regular basis, which was just the community call, um, which was just basically like six of us who are actually interested in the project sitting around talking about how cool source credit is gonna be someday. <laughs> um, and, then, and then we had CredCon. Um, so that was our very first ever in-person event right at the very beginning of 2020, so February. Uh, and I have a little bit of event organizing like experience, very informal, like for my dancing communities. And we had a really rad cred con. I just like ran all of the event stuff. I wasn't really, you know, focused too much on like the content of the work. Gaylor, do you have a quick thought? 
maybe for people who aren't familiar with what a cred con is because <laughs> i was there and i i loved it <laughs> but uh, i know kate's going yeah. a cred what a what yeah cred con uh it was our very first ever in-person event and it was about 10 days in boulder colorado and denver we did it concurrently with east denver so for part of east denver we were able to just like go hang out there got us a venue that was walking distance from there through a little party that's where we met the like metagame team and yalor and hamad and all those kids uh they came back to the airbnb and i served them all snacks <laughs> all party to be a part of yes yeah and <laughs> uh and that was really cool. At the very end of that event, we, the like stragglers, the people who had like really stuck through the entire thing, we all went out to dinner together. Uh, just like planned to discuss a few of the things that we hadn't gotten to yet within the course of the 10 day event. And one of those things was about outreach. And we're all kind of talking at the table and there's no like real conclusions being drawn. And so I just went like, okay, okay, okay. I'm really hearing that we have a need for someone to do outreach work. Do we feel like we have somebody within the team right now who could do that kind of work? Or do we feel like we need to look outside of this team? And everybody at the table just got really quiet. And I was like, oh no, like, what did I do? I often like, I'm kind of awkward, but don't realize it until it's kind of too late. And then Dandelion goes, well, I was kind of thinking that you, LB, would be perfect for that. And everybody else at the table was just like, yeah, no, I thought that that was the obvious move. <laughs> and so it, and I was so funny because I had like immediately disqualified myself because I wasn't like tech enough. I wasn't crypto enough. I wasn't like, I didn't understand that realm well enough. And I kind of had this moment of just like, well, Maybe even if I don't necessarily trust myself to be competent enough to do this, I can trust these other people who trust me. <laughs> and just kind of decided for the first time in my life to do something that I'm really only like 60% qualified for. And it just turned out to be such an amazing choice. I went on from there to start thinking about outreach and then that led me to start thinking about onboarding and that eventually led to where we're at today, which is me being in charge of one third of the project, which is called the cultivation trunk, our community cultivation. And it's all about our operations internally, like community care is a really big aspect of what is our code of conduct? What is our vision and values? You know, how do we deal with cred disputes? How do we make sure that like people feel held? Um, onboarding is like a big aspect of that events. It's just, it's such my wheelhouse. It's something that I just wasn't really sure that I could do. And it really challenged me to grow in a way that has brought so much purpose and like meaning to my life. Mm, that I, I love the yeah the um, I appreciate you acknowledging the kind of imposter syndrome that was part of that process of being like yeah I'm into this I love this I have my access point through dandelion now they are no longer with me all the time I need to find what my space and my role is here yeah um, I'm curious because since you were coming from a different kind of background other than tech what was it about source cred that you were like, I want to kind of carve out the space for myself within this? Yeah. What really spoke to you about the project that kept you mm. Good question. I think one of the really incredible things about source cred is that, you know, in our culture right now of like corporate capitalism, financial maximization is like the end all be all priority. It is the highest priority and everything else kind of, if you have to sacrifice that to make money, that's okay. That's like fine. And there is a ton of work in the world, like emotional labor, logistical labor, artistic labor, things that I feel like I've been doing my entire life and I see other people that I love doing their entire lives and really like building these extremely necessary skills in the world and just never getting valued for it. You know, mm -hmm. maybe you get like 
valued socially, but you don't get valued financially. And sometimes you don't even get valued socially if you don't get seen for that. Um, and just seeing the opportunity that the technology of source cred, it's like vision and value is to create a more equitable and uh, integrity based system for spreading uh, reward and value. And if we can create a technology that can see the kind of labor that I've been doing my entire life and everybody is just like, wow, you're so good at this. How are you not making lots of money? And I'm like, because our culture just doesn't value this even though it desperately needs it. And so seeing an avenue to really like put my fingerprints and get my hands dirty into some form of technology that could potentially change the paradigm of our society and how we like value and reward value is just too good of an opportunity to pass up. And it's not the kind of thing that I ever thought I would get to be involved in. And so to get to be involved in it is just so exciting to me. It's been almost a year now and I'm still daily just like so excited about this project. Cool. I'm so in love with the people who work on it. Oh. It's kind of cool because it's like you are um, through source cred advocating for that kind of value that um, you yourself are also now being valued for by working with source cred. Bingo. A little meta there, I like that. Yeah, but, and um, I, I really yeah. felt like when, you know, we were talking about that imposter syndrome of like when I first kind of joined. Like, I know that these skills are so needed. And it was like secretly inside of myself, I was kind of like, ooh, I don't know if I belong here or if I am like good enough to be here. And then kind of outwardly, I felt like I was just like slamming my foot in the door of tech and being like, you need me and people like me. And just like, okay, everybody in, like get that tech salary, like all of my emotional laborers. <laughs> oh my God, I love that. I, yeah. I couldn't like resonate with that anymore because it was like very much a similar situation. And that was happening right when CredCon was happening. Like me talking to a developer agency and being like, what can I do for you guys? Like yeah. no clue. Right. But finding out that like, there's tons you can do. If you make yourself useful and you show up and you just hold space for people and find the opportunities, you will find your way in. And if the community is willing to value you, you know, I feel like that's such a barrier with this kind of work. So many people are willing to do it. And so people love doing it, but just people don't want to value it in our current culture. And so to find a space where, you know, people come to our community calls and they come to our meetings and I love just like my own little personal ego, <laughs> but also just like, this is what I wanted. When people come to our calls and then afterwards they'll send me a message or they'll talk to me and they'll just go, wow, that is so different from any meeting I've ever been a part of in the tech space. It just feels like so much more wholehearted. We're all like there to laugh and connect with each other and also do work. Like it doesn't have to, you know, I can like smoke on screen and drink a beer or like eat a meal or lay on the floor. Like we're human beings. <laughs> we don't have to pretend not to be. And all of the people in this space, I feel like we kind of like the kind of people in tech who are attracted to this project are often the people in tech who have a lot of emotional intelligence because they do absolutely exist. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and there's a there's a part of it that is marrying both, right? The like EQ and the IQ. And you do find those people in the source code community who are coming from these really amazing, like high mind jobs, and they're like, but that's like I want something more I, I need something deeper and they see the system and they see what's being created and they're like like you said oh yeah like I can't pass that up right I want to I want to work on that exactly mm. um it seemed like there's a lot of heat behind the community aspect for you and yes. the, like the first thing you said was how do we as human beings work together and create spaces that are good for us to be in while doing the work so um, I would love to hear a little bit about your experience with the community itself um, and yeah, how, how it's been to interact with it, maybe in comparison to some of your previous jobs as well. 
Yeah. And, you know, like I said, I haven't worked much in the tech space and even Squarespace, the customer service tech job that I did have was kind of like on the leading edge for like a larger corporation of like really valuing people uh, and trying to treat them well. Um, but yeah, I feel like my entire life, I have been this kind of person who has lots of these like artistic skills, emotional intelligence skills, and it's all things that the world has just not wanted to like pay me for. Um, and that makes it really hard to like be a person who pays rents really consistently and like can stop being hand to mouth with your money. And it, until sourced credit really felt like I had this big internal struggle of, I don't want to be doing, I, I've never wanted to work in a cubicle. I've never wanted to be a cog. Like I do enjoy structure, but I don't want just like the, you go to college, you get an internship, you work a job, you retire, like you die. It's just never appealed to me. <laughs> and so up until now, it's felt like a real struggle of just like, I think this is important and I want to live the way that I want to live. And I want to, you know, I don't want to like shove my talents under the rug and just like be a cog. I want to be celebrated for who I actually am and the kinds of skills that I want to develop in my life. And now that I'm in a space where, like it's almost kind of not even about it being a tech space. These people are just so incredible. The people that I work with, they are drawn by the vision most times because it's kind of a difficult project to get in, be a part of right now. There's so much going on. A lot of the context is held in the minds of people. Like we're really working on expanding our project management right now so that we can kind of make it easier for newcomers to onboard. Um, but by virtue of people coming to this project, being really invested in the vision and being the kind of people who just want to show up regardless of how like confusing it might be at first, it really creates this group of people who are so committed to the values that we hold and are so like not only intelligent but also wise and I think a big part of what I do and have done and want to do every day moving forward both for source cred and the communities that use our technology and potentially eventually nations our world um, is to create a space where you can really evaluate your own relationship to how you work and what you want to do I'm not sure if that quite like answers your question, but. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. It's kind of the like glue that binds everyone. It sounds like. Um, exactly. And I feel like that's yeah. really true in our society. Mm. So like, what is your kind of, you've, you've been at SourceCred for a year now. What is your yeah. like work style? Are you like a dawn to dusk kind of a worker are you like <laughs> hanging out with a cat while like half typing half smoking a spliff like what is your kind yeah, of work style I it's such an interesting question because this is something that I by virtue of working in this space I get to kind of define that for myself how do I want to work you know a lot of the kind of work that I do some of it is concrete in the terms of like writing up proposals and ideas and doing like leadership and management and stuff like that. But I think a lot of where I really tend to bring a lot of unique value is being able to see kind of the larger picture and just like push on different things and kind of be like, oh, you know, this like really isn't working. And because I'm best friends with Dandelion, I can go and kind of like bend the ear of the lead of our project and be like, hey, I'm hearing from the cultivation third of the project that like we don't really want to onboard new people because we need to like change our technology or improve our technology a bit so that it's more nuanced and it does see our like abstract contributions better. And to be able to go to Dandelion and go to the community and say like, hey, we've realized that this is actually really important to us. It's time, it's part of our values. We want to see the technology mature and to have everybody just be like, that makes a ton of sense. Let's do that. <laughs> we want you to feel valued. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. just a lot of like big picture stuff like that where I'm kind of always thinking about the larger scope. Mm. And I'm ADHD, I'm autistic. 
Um, I'm artistic, just mm-hmm. like I go through these kind of like big flows of like, you know, for a little while, I'll kind of go through like a hypomanic phase or a hyper focus phase where I just like whiteboard sheets like clung to my walls everywhere. And I'm just like writing all of these notes and like thinking big thoughts and ideas. And then I'll kind of go through this phase where I'll get really foggy and it's really hard for me to focus and I'm not getting a lot done day to day. And I look at the notes on my wall and I'm just like, I can't even really understand these I can't read them anymore and who was and then, that person that wrote them <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly and mm-hmm. then I'll be like sitting around at midnight one night just kind of like putzing or crocheting or smoking or whatever and then I'll suddenly like it will turn back on and I'll be like wait I can read the diagram I can see the notes you know <laughs> and then I like dive back into it um I'm really trying to like evaluate what is you know, the corporate environment structure of work, the like 40 hours a week, or even like a part time job is just, it's too much for me. I can do it for a while, but I can't do it forever. And I'm always like switching jobs within like a year, because the environment just like really doesn't, it's not flexible enough for me. It's not self directed enough for me. And to finally get the opportunity to just be like, what does work for me? How do I want to show up to work? Like, literally this morning, um, every week we have a call called the Source Cred Weekly Update, where we've kind of like created this, and we're like kind of testing out this new format for a few months now, where every project, like, or every branch lead within the project uh, takes a moment to kind of give some context and some updates, then they like share some gratitudes, and then they share like, what are some opportunities to get involved in this area of the project. And it's very like structured, whereas our community call is all about like, let's talk about how we're feeling. Let's talk about like the new people, give them a chance to absorb, like let's have lots of discussion. The Source Card Weekly Update is a very like, here's what is going on in a very structured and kind of like quick way uh, with a little bit of time for discussion at the end. And today I woke up and I went out to Dandelion and I was just like, I don't want to. I like just don't just like grumpy today. I like don't feel like I have the energy to go and like write in my little part. Like we woke up like 15 minutes before the meeting is supposed to start. And I just like was feeling real grumpy about it. And I just went to our like core channel of people who are kind of always around at the project. And I was just like, hey, I feel grumpy. Like, does anybody else not really want to do this meeting today? And I had like some people were like, yeah, I so feel that. And another person was like, well, you know, that was kind of going to be my only like social interaction for the day. And I kind of really want that. And we were just like, oh, we could just hang out. And we ended up doing kind of this like hybrid of like popcorn style, just like update on what you've been working on if you want to. And it was very informal. And for a while we're talking about like what it's like to raise children. And then we're like back to operations. And it at the end, we just kind of reflected on like how that felt for us. And it just like took a ton of the pressure off. It was, we still like got to hear a lot more about what was going on in the project. People felt less, less burnt out at the end of the meeting. Just like having that malleability of, we can create systems to support people, but that is exactly what they're made to do. And if they're not doing that, we should focus on the people instead. You know, we are not, we don't exist for the systems we created. The systems we created exist for us and should benefit and like improve our lives. Oh, preach. Amen. Yeah. Amen to that. (laughs) Yeah. And I, what you said about the kind of the 40 hour nine to five work week is being just, it's really, um, I mean, I'm not, not across the board, but in, I would say majority of them are really inflexible and don't allow for that kind of natural human cycle of ups and downs and where we are in the, in, in ourselves and our creative process. Like even just hearing you speak about having your moment of like mania and getting out the whiteboard and going for it and then needing that like almost like more internal reflective time to integrate it like that is part of a larger creative process that's specific to your intelligence and to actually be able to honor that versus squash it stick it into a shape that doesn't match your own shape (laughs) it's like it's not serving you and it's not serving the work that you're doing so it's cool to hear that you something that like 
you can kind of decide the shape of it day by day. Absolutely. And yeah. I think that that is one of the things that makes me so passionate about this project that is just like really concrete and easy to see is that through the technology that we're creating, you are awarded value um, based on the value that you have like created and brought to the community in a like intersubjective way. Um, it's one part technology and the algorithm telling you like, hey, you've like earned this much cred because we saw that like this was connected to that and that and that and that and everybody really liked those. Um, but it's also like the social aspect of like pruning and upkeeping and cultivating the like graph of nodes. But it just really detaches this, what we do right now in corporate America, which is value based on time spent. You know, it creates a ton of incentive to just like, well, I'm going to be here all day and I'm going to get paid regardless and I have to be here. So like, why would I do like, I, I want to do as little work as possible so that I don't have to like, you know, if I have to be here anyway. And if you change it from that to value created, you're no longer a slave to like the work week and work time and paid time off or not paid time off, you know, like vacation hours you are just like getting paid both short-term and long-term for your contributions. There's always still a little bit coming in, even if you take some time off. And just the ability to separate time worked from value created as like a measure is so powerful. And I think could really like tap into a lot of demographics that are oppressed or like don't get nearly as many resources and don't get the opportunity to thrive so that they can share like who they are and the value that they could bring to our world. You know, a lot of people like with disabilities like myself just can't work a regular job and can't show up for those hours. And if we could still create a way for them to support their own lives and share like the unique spark that they have, which all humans do, it's we could just like not only improve these people's lives, but also tap into this huge like reservoir of beautiful skill. I see that Yellow has a thought. I wanted to just like piggyback what you're saying because it's totally like the, the two sides of the coin are one feels so extractive, right? It's like, we're going to buy your labor and we're going to use it up as much as we paid for. And then you have your vacations and your time to go restore yourself and regenerate and go to the spa if that's what you need but like on work time you're ours you know you we belong yep. you belong to us we whereas have purchased with, your time yeah whereas with this system right which i think is beyond it extends beyond source cred to like more freelancing right and source cred is a great like value distribution mechanism but like freelancing on things you care about and things that you're inspired to get involved with is more regenerative like it fuels you it gives you energy and you work yes. with people who you connect with and who you're like oh we're building stuff like this is yeah. all good like i like you know you're like you're saying right whereas like your work community almost becomes your community like the people you care about the people that you aspire to change things with and that's like that's what's always kept me like moonlighting in the source good community because yeah. i'm like i don't want to lose sight of these folks because there's just so many good yeah. people in there um but yeah it's a totally different perspective totally different scene and especially in the age of corona where everything is virtual now we have to set boundaries for ourselves and we have to say things are running 24 7 the markets are going the currencies are moving the virtual events are happening in china in uh, Europe and in America in tandem time zone. and if we don't stop and say hey look I need to take me time right and like make make this about myself yeah. and, and treat myself well and work on the schedule that works for me then you will get burned out very easily and I've yep. experienced the same thing you can get burned out super easily especially because there's so many projects happening in at once um, absolutely and you know this almost kind of segues into uh, like right now, I'm very oriented on our internal community and trying to make sure that that is like a stable, wholehearted space in which we are effective and producing things, but also like passionate and really enjoying ourselves and like having collaboration that is a meaningful part of human interaction and like sense of fulfillment. Um, but eventually, I want to create what I've been kind of calling in my mind the community playbook. 
which, you know, will have this technology that kind of, you know, our aim is to make it as nuanced as human contribution is. And if we can create something that really fulfills that um, and is like a powerful, solid technology that works well and it works well in many different situations, then we can kind of take this technology, which creates almost a new paradigm for value, for labor, for rewarding, for like collaborating and create alongside of it a like written resource called the community playbook, which kind of goes like, okay, if you are like starting, say you're starting a new community and you're starting it with source cred and you're like using that technology and you're starting your community from scratch. So maybe the first thing that you want to do is come together as a community and decide your values and say like, wow, we really value this. We really value that. We think that this is super important to us. And the playbook could like give you an introduction to that, give you some support in like creating that container for people. And then it would suggest that like, then you move on to like, okay, what kind of actions do we feel like really support these values? And what kind of actions do we feel like really don't support these values or in contrast with these values? And from that discussion, you can move on to setting the weights for your community which is weights that you can toggle for like this kind of contribution on this platform is worth like this much cred whenever it happens. And this contribution on this platform is worth this much cred how, whenever it happens. And the community can kind of come together and like input the weights in the technology itself after having really thought wholeheartedly about like what do we value and what kinds of actions support those values. So therefore it should be weighted heavily uh, and like flow a lot of cred and therefore grain, which is the like cryptocurrency aspect of it. And, you know, that could be from that kind of thing to like, what does it mean to set an emotional container within a meeting to how do we, as a community who has already done this, recommend you start setting up your code of conduct and how do you deal with like disputes in cred because it's very much also like a social aspect. If somebody is gaming, the technology should make that really obvious. And then the human should come and be like, hey, we recognize that you are like interacting with this not in good faith and that doesn't really work for us. So let's find a way in which we can help you either understand the technology better if you're not doing that on purpose or if you are doing that on purpose, like GTFO. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm hearing is that a year ago you were at a dinner table, like unsure if you were, you know, valuable enough to take on this role of outreach coordinator. And now you're like proposing projects, running a third of the project and like are speaking really confidently to all of these things. So I'm, I'm curious to hear about like that internal shift that's been happening mm. over time. like how like your internal confidence or sense of value has um, yeah. fluctuated over the last year. Yeah, I was quite unsure at first. And even like in the months after I joined and was really like working in the role of like outreach onboarding and then cultivation as a whole. Um, and like, it gives me a lot of empathy for people who are joining the project. Everybody kind of goes through this phase where they're like really inspired, but they're not really sure that they belong here or that they're cool enough or that they're smart enough. And it is absolutely something that like we all go through in the experience of joining SourceCred. And I think it's really, it took me a minute uh, to just like, I, you know, I started leading meetings for the first time in my life. And I initially started by just being like, so like, what do you guys want to talk about? And like, got the feedback that people really just wanted me to be like, okay, this is why we're here. This is what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to make sure that we stay on track. Please give me your opinion, you know, and just like learning slowly over time, how to build that confidence and just having the community really support me in that growth and really like you know, I'm fairly valued by the algorithm and like I have a sponsorship so I can tell that like these people really want me to be here and like spending my time on this as a full-time job um, instead of like having to get a different job under capitalism to support my rent and then like work, you know, moonlight on source cred. Um, and just kind of like, but also I got a ton of just like social support of just all the time 
people in meetings just being like, wow, LB, that was such a good meeting. Like, thank you. I really appreciate you. Like, wow, we just really need like another LB. <laughs> Can we just fork LB, uh, like, you know, all over the place for all of our communities? Exactly. I've actually heard that from multiple, multiple people. Like, <laughs> I've heard that. And they're like, LB yeah, is so, so just great. So money, right? And I'm like, yeah, I see it. I, I see it. Oh, that makes me feel so good. <laughs> and just like that amount of, like, I just genuinely hearing that even right now in this moment, it just makes my heart like glow. And have that in my work environment makes me just like want to show up for it and really like believe in myself that I can bring like a really unique skill set to these people which I've always known that that is true about myself that I have a very unique skill set that is very valuable and very needed in our world but have always just not valued myself because I was not valued by my society and that like really gets in you. Um, yeah, I've actually really noticed that in the process of joining SourceCred, you know, it's, I'm always thinking about onboarding. So I'm always trying to think about the experience and like watch the experience of people as they like move from being a newcomer. And there's kind of these like milestones that everybody hits. And oop, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> that we're thinking brain. about newcomers and I, I, this is actually going to lead into my next question which would be like what would you tell newcomers to like you know keep them at it or keep them involved mm. um I don't know if that's where you're headed but um I'm not sure that it was but I can definitely yeah. like switch to that if I remember <laughs> I'll come back to it give it some space in my brain <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess for newcomers right now, like we just have just yesterday, I had like a one-on-one -on -one onboarding one-on-one -on -one with someone who I think is going to do just like amazing things for our onboarding. It's always been like kind of a pet project of mine that I like deeply care about. But as I just continue to take on responsibility, I just like don't have the bandwidth to really give that like branch the attention that I want to. Um, so we're going to be improving this soon, but for right now, like the kind of people who do really well in this community are people who want to come in and take a very abstract question and be like, cool, how does this affect people? What kind of systems would be useful here? How do we want to structure this? How do I want to move forward with this? Like really being able to think critically is a really powerful tool in this like young state that this project, this community, this technology is in. Um, and just like, you know, we're working on fleshing out our docs, but if you're trying to join source cred right now, just come to the community call, get connected with the people. Like that's what our community call is for. So you can come and feel the vibe. We can get to know you. And then do not be shy about just like hanging out in the discord channels maybe trying to write up some of your thoughts in the discourse, maybe trying to have like one-on-ones with people that you like particularly jived with or found interesting. Um, the, the human aspect is just like very strong and makes up for a lot of our lack of onboarding right now. And I think that if you wanna get involved, the way to do it is just to really show up with your enthusiasm, your love, your like sense of vision and continue staying connected and we will find space for you. It takes time to just like understand the project and understand like yourself because I find that as people leave capitalism, it's almost like leaving an abusive relationship. And suddenly you're in this new space where like you're not with that horrible person anymore and they're not hurting you all the time anymore. And you can take time off whenever you want to, as long as you communicate it effectively. And like uh, that people really need like a moment to kind of wheel and just be like, oh, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure that I still just like need to work all the time or else I'm going to get fired, you know? And like, there is no hiring or firing. There is just like come and contribute value. Um, and so they almost like need a moment to just kind of feel that out and recognize that they can start to evaluate their own sense of how to be a worker, how to engage with work in a way that is healthy and productive for them as an individual. Uh, and so when, as people come in, I really put a ton of emphasis on 
It's okay to move slowly. Trust is built slowly over time. That's like one of the axioms of my life. <laughs> um, and so I really encourage people to just like take the time to try and understand what the community is socially, what the technology is, like sift through the documentation and give us feedback on it. Like really just kind of take the time to evaluate how you might want to engage because you know, sometimes what your skills are in are not actually where you want to be growing yourself. Like I, I know somebody who I was like, oh, I know that you have like a lot of project management skills. Do you maybe kind of want to come be a part of this process of us like building up our project management tools? And they were like, you know, I am really good at that, but it's just not what I want to be doing right now. Like I want to be like expanding my code and like dev abilities. Uh, and so that was just like really cool to hear. And like, I want to make space for people to really take the time to evaluate their own desires, skill sets, and like passions and find out where that intersects. I feel like that's a whole nother paradigm shift too, right? Like you get hired to do this job. You are a developer for X, Y, and Z, but then yep. you're like, well, actually, like, I kind of want to go and do like user experience interviews so I can like level up my skills and they're like but that's not really what we hired you for so just like stay in your lane and let those yeah. people do that and you do that whereas it's like growth and change and ev evolution individually is all about exploration experimentation and like trying different things and the more you can create a safe container and say yeah we don't want to stop paying you for exploring and learning and leveling your skills up the better, more well-rounded, like human you're going to have working on whatever piece of technology or project. So yeah, you're ahead of the game. I'll be it. <laughs> yeah. I truly believe, uh, this is from Mr. Leichner, a advertising art and design teacher I had in Alaska, who, if he had taught me nothing about advertising art and design, I still would have been just like so happy with what he taught me about life in that class. And he really emphasized the fact that creativity happens at the intersection between different ideas and it's like one of my personal beliefs in my life that like I have a library in my head and the more like diverse things that I can kind of fill that library with the more connections I will be able to make the more like unique things I can like design and intuit and like see because of that and I just think that that's probably true for everybody and if we are like supporting not only like the healthy well-being but also the thriving and the growth that a person can do then they will absolutely do better work <laughs> i i love that creativity happens at the intersection of different ideas that is like you've just articulated a core belief that exists inside me that I haven't been able to <laughs> say so poetically Woo! or succinctly. Yeah, big credit really, to Mr. Leichner. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hey, what's up? Let's go check out that advertising class. <laughs> but um, I'm curious to know, because you mentioned um, that you um, are artistic and I know you in the very beginning you mentioned that you're part of, you know, fusion dance communities. So I'm I'm curious to know how other parts of your life um, beyond source cred that are like what kind of artistic things you involve yourself in that perhaps, you know, kind of feed into your creative mind or are just like lovely hobbies that you're proud of. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I I used to joke um, that I am good at, I'm really, really good at all the artistic things that society does not want to pay me for. Uh, so music, dancing, visual arts, uh, any of that kind of thing, anything that our society like doesn't want to value, I'm on it. Like I've always just had a natural affinity for and, you know, like art, people are always just like, oh my God, like, I wish I could be a great artist like you. Oh my goodness. Like, how did you ever become such a good artist? Like I could never do that. And I'm like, well, it's not really because I wanted to be a really good artist. It's just because art is one of the ways in which I process things. When the, my internal landscape is just like so loud, I finally just go like, fine, I'll do art. And it's, much more of like a coping mechanism for me and like as well as a sense of like joy and accomplishment uh and expression 
And so being able to just kind of like lean on that tool or like by virtue of leaning on that tool in my life, uh, I've just gotten really good at it because I'm doing it all the time. Um, and yeah, like I've never really had a job where I was using my artistic skills. I have frankly very little training in music, dance or visual arts, but they're just the kind of thing that brings me so much joy I can't not do it absolutely yeah and no I, f I feel similarly and it's like having the... so... go ahead uh, it's <laughs> to say having so much crossover knowing so many dancers uh, like a dancer a dancer sitting across from a dancer my partner is also a dancer it's like <laughs> really? yeah yeah so many conversations to be had <laughs> oh the next cred con there's going to be so much dancing yes. we've got multiple dancers yes. in the source cred community <laughs> one whom i didn't even know was a dancer is like living on the east coast now but was a dancer in seattle and i like didn't find this out until weeks or months like after he'd started working with us and i was just like wait you're a fusion dancer like we legitimately could have met at a <laughs> dance like years ago <laughs> Kind of love when that happens, yeah. right? The hindsight of like our relationship could have been so much closer, so much sooner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, just in the way that like connections bring you to things. Like there are a lot of people who have joined this project, like Joey, uh, who is working on our community care branch and has a ton of work or a ton of experience and like expertise in the realm of like code of conduct, community disputes, um, you know, community policies, stuff like that, that are like justice oriented, equity oriented. Uh, they have all of that skill because they've just been doing that for the dance community for so long, for all of these different types of dance events uh, and just like have really honed those skills and because they like were a dancer and like were spending their time on these skills, but also because they were a dancer and made connections within the dance scene with people who like happened to be working on this project. Uh, they were able to like join source cred in a tech space that I am pretty confident they never thought that they would like end up in uh, just like myself or like how, you know, the very first contribution I ever like concretely made to source cred that like the algorithm could see other than just like supporting dandelion as like a dear friend um, in the year before was I made art because dandelion's father Amiko who I'm quite close to uh, he bought me an apple uh, like an iPad and an apple pencil because he just like believed in my art and we were traveling the whole year and he just like wanted me to be able to keep making art and so I got access to this new medium, which new mediums are always just like really exciting and tasty to my brain. I always have like an explosion of creativity. And because Dandelion's sitting across the couch from me, just like talking about source cred all day, uh, source cred is what I started to make art about and just like made some interesting like posters using the logo that we had like kind of sat next to each other and designed together. Um, and that was like my first like concrete contribution that made me go, oh, I like can offer something that like I genuinely enjoy. And then it was like a month or two later in Dandelion that one of our like impromptu community calls was just like, LB, you know, you have like 400 grain, right? And I was just like, what? No, I did not know that. Like, what is that from? And like, yeah, it's from your art that you made like that got used for the podcast like you know cover when we were like first starting that it got used on like this website like it got used in all these different places and like has lots of cred flowing to it uh and just like a lot of people really liked it um and so that was like first one yeah I'm, and that was really I'm one like of the those first people. time I ever got paid for my art <laughs> that's so cool that was in this space Yep. valued your art yeah yep still looking to forward to there. shirts with the newest uh yeah. version the mandala version oh yeah the mandala version or yeah. i really really want the uh the cred chameleon on a shirt that's a good one it has I like the logo that. as its yeah. eye oh right right, right. <laughs> that's dope um well we've got like five more minutes left and um Taylor, if you have another question as well, I want to open up the space to you. The um, the only thing kind of 
I'm left here with is like what questions you're asking as you like move into the future like what's kind mm. of brewing in your mind right now about what you're mm. curious about as you're um looking forward with this like sense of yeah confidence that you've acquired over the last year yeah it's I'm quite like zoomed in on our internal community right now I'm really like you know, I, my job is technically in the like community cultivation branch, but I'm always just kind of thinking about like the larger scope of the project as a whole. And, you know, like how can we, right now we're really turning our eye towards this new addition to our technology called the creditor, which will make it possible for right now, like the, the technology, the algorithm that like assigns cred uh, really only sees three platforms that are like digital. And so if you're, we've have some workarounds, but basically if you're not doing something on that platform, the technology is not seeing it. And there's all kinds of contributions that happen outside of the platforms. And so the creditor would make it possible to go and like add manually, like, hey, this big contribution happened and it was attached to this one and this one and these people worked on it. And I think that that will just be huge for, not only like being able to capture work that is being done, but isn't being seen, but is still very valuable to us, but also being able to kind of help our community really like visualize and understand and really start to get some good literacy with our technology and with the algorithm and how the cred flows around. Um, it's such a complicated project that sometimes even people inside of it don't quite understand all of it. And so, I think right now I'm just really focused on this kind of like next win that we could do within like the next half a year maybe um, of just putting together our community. I want us to be just like so solid. I want our social dynamic to be super solid. I want our technology to be super solid. I want us to feel really good and confident and wholehearted about it. And then we can like open it up and actively be like, hey, communities come use us. Right now, we're just like, if they come to us, we like start having a conversation about it, but we're not actively advertising. Um, and so I think that I'm really just kind of like oriented on this next phase of like, how do we become just like really tight, really good form? There's this um, metaphor of, or it's not a metaphor, it's a, there's this book called The Secret Life of Trees or The Hidden Life of Trees, I think, that I just love. And it talks about how in like an established forest, the new like sapling trees that are growing actually don't get enough light and the larger trees actually kind of like cut them off. And this is like, they still are able to grow because in the mycelium under the ground, uh, the trees are transferring nutrients back and forth to each other. And with the saplings, they give them like only just enough to stay alive and continue growing a little bit. And it really slows their growth down. But by doing this, their like internal matter is like far more dense and far less susceptible to fungus or bacteria. Um, which is like one of the common ways that trees just like die. Um, and so by forcing a very slow growth, they're actually creating trees that have a better chance of reaching maturity and like becoming a value member of like the entire ecosystem. Because if they're not all like surviving together, then they're not creating like the climate that helps them survive. Um, and it's just, I really am a huge fan. I'm a triple Taurus. I am very like earth energy, very like invested in the narrative of move slow and intentionally and grow in a way where you are like really growing in the direction that you want to. You're stable and grounded. And I think that if we can do that, create a really like stable, grounded, authentic, wholehearted environment with a functioning product that is not only like works well, but is like easy and interesting and fun to use, then I will be so excited for us to grow and like explode after that. 
Wow. I couldn't add anything better to that. Just, uh... Oh, thanks. That's an excellent tree metaphor. Truly one of the best. I'm kind of obsessed with trees. I really feel like source cred is like one tree right now. It's kind of a sapling and like all of the different projects in the crypto space in the open source space are also trees in this forest where we're trying to like create something new, create like a climate, a paradigm that like works better for us and helps us thrive. And source cred as a technology is almost that mycelium that kind of like runs between each project uh, tree and kind of like helps us like move nutrients and resources in a way that truly sustains and like supports the entire ecosystem as a whole. Um, yeah, it's, just like the forest metaphor really does it for me. <laughs> it fits too. You've made it really yep. nicely. Yeah, yeah, I love the imagery of the mycelium as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you want to learn more, right? That's that's what yeah, I really yeah. did for me. Come like work with us. What, yeah, a, what exactly. a good like pitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna say maybe that leads to the next. Like, where would you lead people? Where would you tell them to find out more? How can they connect? Yeah, um, I would say definitely check out our website. We've got a little bit of documentation there that is kind of the bare minimum. We're still working on improving it and it will continue to improve for as long as we exist. Um, but we have some now, which is exciting. Um, our discourse is a good place to kind of see like the longer term discussions that have been occurring, the different like proposals, the different like changes in thought as we've like created this project, very good for context. If you can dig your way through it, we're reorganizing it soon. Um, and then the discord is just like, that is where it's like the heart blood of our project. It's where we're always just kind of like communicating, joking, laughing, like, you know, coordinating, uh, having meetings and 100% comes to the community call. That is just like, I host it. I'm there to make it a space that is specifically for newcomers, if any, join us that week. And just like, we want to hear about you and who you are and like get to know you a little bit, give you the chance to get to know us. Um, and then I'll also say that just any meeting that's in our voice channels, um, if it's, as long as it's not an invite only meeting voice channel, um, you're always welcome to just sit in on meetings and like be a fly on the wall and just kind of gain context that way. Um, that's definitely something that I have started doing or like did from the beginning of just like, oh, there's like a weekly developer like software engineering call. I'll just like sit in on that sometimes or there's like a crypto economics jam, which I know very little about and like might not even quite understand the conversation. But every time I sit in on one, I understand a little bit more and I gain a little bit more context and understand, like fill that library up a little bit more and start making more connections. Um, so that's a really good way to just kind of like see what what is source cred? How does it actually work on a day to day basis? Yeah. Sweet. Well, I think that wraps up our interview for today, but I am like, I'm glowing from your passion and your enthusiasm <laughs> for what you do. It's really oh. it's like, it's contagious and felt. And this is what's cool about being able to do these interviews. It's like just the chance to, to not only hear about, you know, the work you're doing, but your process getting into it. I feel like that is just as valuable for other folks to hear and understand that it's not always you're knocked over the head with like, this is what I'm meant to do. And I have all yeah. the confidence to do it right up front. It is a process and it takes, yeah. you know, a little trial like, and error and, and figuring it out. But it sounds like you've had a really remarkable community behind you as well, kind of encouraging that so well in yourself. So um, uh, thank you. That's what I'm trying yeah. to say. Thank you for spending thank an you. hour. <laughs> yeah. I'm so grateful for this opportunity because at this point, my friends are like, hey, can you like shut up about source cred? I'm sick of hearing about how my thing would be made so much better if we just did it like source cred. You know, <laughs> if source cred were just like a thing already. And so it's really quite a joy for me to get the chance to just like, wax poetic about my favorite thing <laughs> just gush about it yeah and yeah. now you can share this with them as like a, a a story behind the the technology which i think is what we were trying to accomplish here with these interviews yes. so yeah. yeah we'll call it to a halt with that